So I've got a special project or a special topic for you in this Create Profit section. And it's about EBITDA. So what are you going to learn? Well, you're going to see in what situations it's suitable to make use of EBITDA as a profitability measure. In fact, I didn't even mention it, but you're going to learn what EBITDA is. And then you're going to see the point of the, I'll point out the weaknesses of EBITDA. And then you're going to be able to follow Warren Buffett's argument that depreciation must be included in measuring the financial performance. So what is EBITDA? Well, it's just a measure of operating profit. Remember, we've already seen the measure that's called EBIT. That's the operating profit. This is just a modified EBIT. So what's the modification? Well, you add back two non-cash items, depreciation and amortization. And that's the DA in EBITDA. So EBITDA is not shown in the P&L because generally accepting accounting principles do not require it. Investors calculate it and some companies provide it as supplemental information, but they don't have to and many companies don't. Now EBITDA excludes, excludes differences in debt, taxes, and long-term investment. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at debt first. Interest is based, the interest that's paid on debt is based on the shareholder's decision of financing with debt versus equity. And also taxes can be different by company, by sector, or by country. So why not exclude these items? And depreciation and amortization are dependent on a company's policy related to long-term asset investments and depreciation policies. As well, some countries are different than others in what they allow. Now, I remember when I first started to be an analyst, we didn't have EBITDA measure. But I think when I really saw it come up in my career was the explosion of the telecom companies. Telecom companies have long-term contracts and long-term assets. And the telecom companies had lots of different ways they wanted to depreciate those assets. And so what you could have found in the past is two telecom companies that are exact same, but they have different depreciation policies. And EBITDA would allow you to look at those two companies and, not, and be able to take away the differences in this non-cash charge of depreciation. What are the strengths? Well, EBITDA is a measure of operating earnings that removes things that are often beyond the employee's control, like the amount of debt that the company has, or the taxes paid, or the depreciation policy. And the other strength is that EBITDA is often used when a parent company measures the profitability of a subsidiary company. This is because the parent company usually makes the decisions about the debt, the taxes, and the asset investment. So using EBITDA, in this case, helps the employees of the subsidiary focus on improving the operating earnings of the com company. EBITDA can be suitable for mergers and acquisitions, M&A, because the buyer has the flexibility of financing that business with debt or equity. Therefore, the buyer is less concerned about how the business is financed. In fact, in the area of M&A, it's commonplace that the buyer may bring on a lot of debt onto the company that they acquired. So they don't really care so much about the capital structure of the company because they may change it when they come in. So what are the weaknesses? Well, a company with too much fixed assets can hide that fact because the resulting high depreciation will not be revealed in EBITDA. And with capital intensive businesses, capital expenditure and depreciation, the depreciation that it causes are significant costs and should be included in any measure of profitability. Now the reduction in the value of an asset represented by the depreciation charge is meant to closely follow the deterioration of the value of that asset. Therefore, what we can say is that it's a real cost and it should be included when calculating profitability. And that would argue that we should be using EBIT, not EBITDA. Let's imagine a case of two identical companies. First, Company A. Company A has new assets and therefore high depreciation charge and therefore lower profit. Now let's look at the next company. Company B has old assets that need to be replaced. 
That means that they have low depreciation charges and therefore higher profit. Now company B here would, may seem to be more attractive because it's got high profit. However, they both, the problem is, is that EBITDA would be the same for both of these companies because it does not account for future investment in assets needed to maintain the company's profits. Now, if that investment in assets was required over the next few years, the increase in depreciation would naturally decrease profits and likely reduce the amount of dividends that the company could pay. Now, what we can see from that and what another weakness is, is that since it ignores debt, management may use EBITDA to shift the investor's focus away from this critical area of risk. An investor should consider two, or could consider two companies with an equal EBITDA as equal, but they may miss the one that one company has high debt and the other has no debt. Also, finally, EBITDA ignores operating leverage. Operating leverage is so awesome. Imagine you build a factory and you can expand your revenue for years and years and years and keep using the, that factory until it gets full. For those five years maybe that you could use that factory and keep increasing your revenue, nothing's changed about the cost related to that factory. This is the concept of fixed costs and heavy asset, heavy businesses have a lot of fixed costs, and that can be great when we can see things go up. So communication services companies tend to be asset heavy. And because depreciation costs are fixed, if revenue rises, profits would rise even higher, and vice versa if revenue fell. So, he said, trumpeting EBITDA implies that depreciation is not truly an expense given that it is a non-cash charge. Now that's nonsense. In truth, depreciation is a particularly unattractive expense because the cash outlay it represents is paid up front before the asset acquired has delivered any benefits to the business. Now he continues and says, it amazes me how widespread the use of EBITDA has become. People try to dress up financial statements with it. And finally, Warren Buffett says, does management think that the tooth fairy pays for capital expenditures? <laughs> uh, he's funny there. And we're going to learn more about this capital expenditure issue in the assets section. I, I thought about the transformation, not the information thing. In the beginning of the course, I thought it sounded a little bit stupid, <laughs> to be honest. But during some one of the live sessions, by moving through the material, I started to understand the point. And that was uh, a light bulb. <laughs> what I think we can do is um, identify the places that you want to work and then let me help you, you know, by introducing you as someone who has excelled in the class type of thing as a way of getting that door open. 